Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 92nd episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Right now to start off, I just want to say that Apple did hold their annual Worldwide Developers Conference on Monday, and while they didn't unveil the next generation iPhone, they had some pretty big announcements. So before I get into this, I just want to say that I did a live blog on WWDC. I'll have a link to that down below in the more info. It has full details there, and I'll also link you guys to my complete and in-depth iOS features and changes overview video. Now first, I just wanted to briefly go over iOS 6. Aside from various UI changes, iOS 6 introduces a new in-house mapping application developed by Apple in instead of using Google Maps app that was present in iOS since its release alongside the original iPhone in 2007. Also inside the mapping application for the new third generation iPad, as well as the iPhone 4S, Apple added the ability to view the world in 3D, that is if it's supported and if it's already mapped in 3D. And they also added turn-by-turn -turn voice guidance by Siri inside of the app. And that brings me to my next point. Siri functionality was added to the new third generation iPad, so it no longer has just dictation. Now it has complete complete Siri functionality and also Siri was updated. So now Siri has the ability to not only open applications, but it can also find various information about different sports as well as getting you more in-depth statistics. And it can also answer different questions related to movies, finding show times near you. And it has a more robust experience for users trying to find different restaurants in their area. And you can even make reservations through Siri via open table. Now iOS 6 also added deep Facebook integration as well as shared photo albums. Now Apple introduced a new app application known as Passbook, and that is essentially their way of keeping everything organized digitally. So once they get more stores, vendors, and airlines to go along with it, the idea is you'll be able to keep most of your payments and information on your phone. They also finally added the ability to use FaceTime over 3G or over cellular data if you're on a new third generation iPad running on LTE. They also made improvements to the iPhone application and the fact that if somebody actually calls you, now you can swipe up to reveal more options. They added new VIP mailing. They added a couple different settings to the settings application, such as a do not disturb toggle, which essentially mutes all of the notifications coming through when your device is locked. And you can even schedule it to automatically come on at a certain time. And Safari was even updated to include tabs in the cloud. So now you can view all of the pages that are on all of your other devices that support tabs in the cloud. And you can actually go to those pages if you want. And there are also some other changes. So like I said, I'll have a link to a post down below in the more info that details most of the changes in iOS 6. And I actually have a video that gives you guys an in depth overview of iOS 6. So I'll have links to both of those again down below. Also at WWDC, Apple revealed some more information about OS X Mountain Lion. They announced a couple of new features and they also set a general release date as well as announcing a price tag for it. So the first major thing is dictation. Similar to how the third generation iPad started off, it won't get full Siri functionality. However, you will be able to input text via voice. So again, while it won't be able to assist you with various things, it will definitely be able to type what you dictate to it. Also, Apple announced Power Nap, which essentially will enable your Mac to do various things while it's sleeping and even more things while it's plugged in, such as grabbing new software and updating it for you. And while Apple didn't announce an exact release date, they said it should be released next month or July of 2012 and also they said that the price tag will be $19.99 and that will be for users as far back as Snow Leopard. So basically you'll be able to upgrade from any OS X version that's running an app store because that's actually how you're going to download OS X Mountain Lion. So once you make that $19.99 purchase, you'll be able to use it across all of your Macs. And if you buy a new Mac that's actually with OS X Lion, such as a new Retina MacBook Pro, which was also announced at WWDC, you'll receive a free upgrade to OS X Mountain Lion once it's released. Next, and probably one of the more interesting things announced at WWDC was Apple's next generation mid-2012 Retina Display MacBook Pro. So this is an extremely amazing laptop and it's definitely one of the more powerful computers Apple has ever designed and it's also a new and thinner profile than any previous MacBook Pro model. And I actually did an unboxing video for it and I'll have a link to it down below in the more info where I provide more details on it such as all of the specifications. Next up, iOS 6 beta was actually jailbroken the other day by the iPhone dev team via Red Snow and while it doesn't actually give the user Siri functionality, it does allow them to SSH into their device. And right now it only works on the iPhone 4, the iPhone 3GS, and the fourth generation iPod Touch. So again, when you jailbreak, it's a tethered jailbreak and you will not get Cydia, you'll just get SSH functionality. And it's primarily for developers and advanced users who know their way around SSH. And finally, two days ago on June 13th, Pod2G announced that Apple has successfully patched a kernel exploit that the dev teams have used in the past prior to the release of an actual firmware. So they 
used it for the iOS 5 beta to jailbreak it and actually get things up and running and improve compatibility support before the firmware is actually released to the public. So again, once it's released, they can get a jailbreak out and they can also get compatible jailbreak applications and tweaks out as well. So while Apple has successfully patched it, it won't directly affect the end user. It will basically affect the developers who create the packages for Cydia. So I guess it's not too far off to say that it will indirectly affect the end user in the sense that the packages won't be updated as quickly unless they can figure out a way around it, which as I just mentioned, they did release a jailbreak for developers on iOS 6 beta. So hopefully once they get Cydia up on it and they add a couple of other functions, developers will even further be able to increase compatibility for their various Cydia packages. All right, now that's it for this week's episode. Episode, let me know down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info what do you guys think about Apple's WWDC this year? Do you think they fell short or do you think they met your expectations? Again, just leave your responses below or on Best Tech Info. Also, don't forget to rate this video up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos. And to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.